Hello all. Uh, good afternoon to you all of you again, and I welcome you for the second half session, which is always post lunch uh, heavy sessions, and uh, I am given an opportunity to speak about uh, railway bearings and emerging trends and standardisation. So, firstly, I thank uh, BIS uh, committee and Tata Motors who is uh, facilitating here, and also uh, Dr. Manish Rai. and professors who has given a brief lecture and detailed uh, informations about magnetic bearings before i start out uh, i want to comment on few things especially uh, like uh, you know scholars when they presented the magnetic bearing researches now it's a time for uh, bearing manufacturer like us maybe we have uh, shaffler uh, timkin uh, skf as a bearing manufacturer how to converge these uh, ideas or you can say the researches into product that too in a scalable manner so that is uh, the key uh, things which we need to work out because magnetic bearings are the one which we see in the scope of 10 years or 15 years uh, in the next coming time they would be the real uh, products which are in the need of market that's a point and second i want to go on with the railway bearings emerging trends as a subject and uh, here when uh, you can see the agenda me uh, from skf as well as timkin were given in a same subject then uh, we thought of why not to have a you know look on each other's subject so that we should not bore the you know uh, listeners or you can say the contributors so in this uh, concept so what i am going to brief you mainly on uh, the past of railway wheel set bearings because you would have uh, heard about only bearings but what is all about wheel set bearings and uh, what is the present uh, market situation of uh, railway wheel set bearings and what are the railway standards and uh, lastly about the emerging trends of railway market so these are the four uh, subjects which i am going to speak about and uh, during uh, yesterday's uh, discussions of bis as well as committee members uh, actually there was plan to have uh, you know uh, progress towards uh, standardization of uh, uh, bearings testing uh, which of course is going to happen uh, later with rdso who is a main conveyor and a governing body for railway bearings so with that presence we plan to have it so with that note maybe you can see on the screen quite an interesting picture where in uh, railway axle bearings when they are started in uh, way back 1900 so they were all uh, you know plain bearings there were no any rollers or there no any special technologies at that time so of course uh, it used to be a high friction and high heat generating inefficient solutions which was been started to a present scenario maybe in india if i say uh, icf who makes uh, indian coach factory which makes uh, vande bharat where the expectation of speed is you know 200 kilometers with aluminum bodies so what i want to say here is about how a uh, uh, inefficient way of uh, uh, you know uh, bearing wheel set progress has started and how we are at now maybe in uh, coming future when you see the government of india projects where they speak about uh, high speed rails which is already in you know in progress so maybe we will go for uh, new technologies which is already been worked by japanese counterparts rail makers so <clears throat> this is how the evolution started and you can see these are still uh, some places like uh, uh, railway cambodia uses such type of uh, plain bearings of course the intensity of uh, railway networks are or you can say the usage of intense uh, railway networks are quite low in those countries but uh, emerging countries are in a transformation phase from uh, you know such type of plain bearings to a uh, different technological bearings or you can say the smart bearings you would have heard this smart bearings terminology uh, during uh, morning sessions so the smart bearings uh, are uh, you know the customer voices nowadays so it means it should not only perform as a bearing or a bearing unit it should also sense and uh, uh, 
give the customer clear information when I am going to fail or <laughs> when my life would be ending. So this gives a customer a clear picture when uh, he should be ready with the downtime or prepare himself for the downtime. So that's, I call it as a smart and this is the present time. So again, as his, uh, you know, slide from history, where in the plane roller bearings, where, how the evolution happened from 1903, where the DWF, the Deutsche organization started out to grow with a deep uh, group ball bearings, which they call as a DGBB. Now it's reduced to a smaller shapes, sizes. So it used to carry like uh, 33 tons with a uh, higher uh, bearing loads. And after we uh, go with uh, uh, rolling elements, this has been reduced with 86%. So this was a first like a transformation phase, how it has been seen. Some of the pictures of old drawings where the DGBBs or roller bearings or uh, spherical roller bearings. So this how the evolution has been started. Here I want to show about the last 100 years of uh, railway axle bearings, how the evolution has happened and where are we. Like a primitive solutions would have seen the DGBB, a basic uh, ball bearing units, which you would have normally seen now in the wheel, uh, you know, automotive uh, two wheelers. So those all areas you would have seen DGBB self aligning ball bearings, which is the main properties, which has been started out at that time. And they shifted slowly during 1950s to 2000 with uh, bearings as a bear. It means they are not as a bearing units. So what is the difference between normal bearings as well as, you know, when compared to bearing units? So bearing units comes as a complete set. I will show you in pictures now. So <clears throat> this is a transformation where the optimized solution with the tapered roller bearings, which is used in the wheel set, which we call as a TBUs and uh, cylindric uh, cylindrical roller bearing units, which we use in the drives and uh, compact uh, TBUs, which again used in uh, wheel set bearings for uh, different wagons or you can say the passenger uh, trains. Maybe before I go, I want to show a picture how actually the TBU looks like. The TBU looks like as a when, why I am saying this as a unit, because uh, it comes as a, a double roller, taper uh, roller units with the grease and uh, with the clearly adjusted uh, seals and you can say a cage which accommodates the rollers. Interesting thing is customer nowadays or you can say after TBU been uh, in place, they want a higher maintenance intervals and they don't want to grease it. Jitna chalna hai chalna nahi and, it, and the expectation is up to 1.3, 1.6 and now they are uh, uh, you know expecting 1.8 million kilometers with no no grease change or you can say no any checkpoints with maybe a, a, a few refurbishments in between other than that the expectation of life is very high from rail makers and it in turns uh, us a bearing manufacturer a more responsible way to choose or you can say a design in how best we, we can accommodate on uh, materials which could be cost effective how to choose the greases which should be having a longer life, how the you know packaging or you can say the rubber seals which are part of this to avoid a dirt entry can be because it, it, it contributes to the performance of TBU. So these are the challenges we have in front for the railway products and yes, we are doing different researches uh, at our end, we are taking a fellowship uh, you know uh, inputs from different scholars how to improve the performance of this TBU to increase the maintenance interval specifically. So just to show you how uh, the evolution or the product standardization comes into picture post 2000. You can see uh, with the standardization when I say uh, I put it out into five different verticals. First is about the design optimization which how the different configurations are being done with various sizes. Here, uh, when you compare with the railway bearings or industrial bearings, uh, or you can see the magnetic bearings, which was, they are all customized, uh, you know, specific to uh, an industry. But here, they are more generalized bearings where the customer clearly gives only three informations in his technical documentation, 
mainly saying my axle tonnage is this much i want this as a life cycle cost to me and this should be the maintenance interval which i want which is highest with that uh, uh, you know technical informations when we quote from our organization different organizations when we quote we should be competitive enough to address all these three then only we'll be getting a tender and we'll work on that so this is how yeah yeah which one i don't get your point yeah yeah okay so okay the requirement the requirement for any rail makers or you can say rail customer is mainly the axle loads okay second one is uh, the life cycle lcc and third one is a maintenance interval so these are the three uh, you know requirements generally custom, you know uh, rail maker throws at uh, uh, bearing manufacturers so i was speaking about the design optimization how we can do second one about the cop uh, component optimization where like when you see uh, a 15 years back or maybe 10 years back the cages which i shown where the rollers used to fit used to be in a brass or uh, steel cages and uh, now uh, considering the challenges in, uh, challenges of cost as well as uh, optimum uh, performance we replace them with the polypropylene cages or you can say uh, plastic cages in simple words which can accommodate which can, which can be uh, good enough for the loading which can be good enough in the temperatures which are been arising at that situation so it's optimization and lubrication of course the different type of greases we have we are using and we are optimizing the commonized greases across the industry which can be cost effective lastly a refurbishment and mainly when i come about the manufacturing optimization with this all leads to a tapered uh, you know requirement to make it as a standard which emerges as en12080 so uh, it's when i attend this uh, bis uh, committee one thing i uh, i feel pretty that uh, till now uh, in the railway industry because uh, we are in, uh, having a railways at least since 100 years with the british you know laid the foundation we don't have our own uh, standards railway standards until now we are completely you know dependent on aar that is american Ra uh, railroad uh, standards or en standards these are the only two verticals of standards which we were hanging upon and we never built our own standards how to test these bearings what should be the specifications no we never maybe this is an opportunity where uh, i really thank bis team has uh, look and uh, had a uh, you know strong consideration to have this uh, standardization to be done or you can say the standard has to be built for railways and it's a good move of course it takes a longer lead time to develop such a you know standard because uh, it uh, not only speaks about uh, the you know freight or uh, you can say the transportation of goods it also uh, speaks about safety it also speaks about passengers where the human life is involved so we should be very critically uh, you know examine this standard and uh, make this uh, standard available for forthcoming uh, indian uh, railways uh, future So next, I want to move with uh, where are we with the railway wheel set bearings, and what are the expectations of rail makers, or you can say the end users. Uh, you can say in Europe, uh, that's, there is a trend that like, uh, you know rail maker is different, and rail operators are privatized there. But uh, like example, SNCF in France, who operates for the you know Europe rails. Here it is not the case, of course. Here the wholesale responsibility is Indian Railways on the main line. But of course, there is a slow trend change where you see different metro corporations, Lucknow Metro Corporations, uh, Chennai Metro Rail Corporations, who own the responsibility of uh, managing the product on their wheels as a metro platforms. But yes, main line still we are uh, under government observations. And uh, I don't know what's the th thought of uh, government in future uh, on the privatization or maybe other aspects or a private rail, a private rail maker to come in. So what's happening in the railway industry when you see the picture, it shows a rolling stock market when it has been distributed, it's into four quadrants, mainly the high speed rails, metro 
and you can say the tramways or the freight. So generally whenever uh, uh, we split out uh, this uh, rolling stock, it is majorly heavily you know, uh, goes for you know, uh, the related to the metros as well as next is about the freight. So you would have seen the freight uh, requirements or you can say if you would have heard some forums when the railway minister says how the freight uh, capacity is planned to increase uh, not only with respect to number of wagons but also the tonnage. Previously the tonnage of uh, you know freights were quite less around 15, 17 tons, 18 tons. Now uh, in forthcoming time the expectation is around 25 to 30 tons. So it means that more uh, high, uh, no, uh, capacity has to build for wagons to take on more bags or you can say more luggage. So <clears throat> what is happening in the industry, urbanization, localization, uh, supply chain, certification, aging train fleets. Now maybe you see uh, in course of time uh, the blue coaches which you are running as a LHB coaches will be slowly replaced with the modernized coaches. You would have seen or you would have traveled there. The coaches are getting reshaped and uh, more of uh, ICF or you can say ICF is inducing or you can say the Vande Bharat are getting induced for a you know, duration of around 12 uh, in the span of up to 10 hours of a normal journey. LHB uh, is been replaced with uh, aluminum body or you can say the modernized uh, uh, ICF coaches. So this is how the trend of railway industry is been emerging now in India. And uh, of course, when I speak about uh, uh, railways, of course, operators as well as OEMs have the different view. That's operators have the uh, tailor maintenance performance, maximum, maximize the uptime, reduce the downtime, improve the environmental impact. OEMs who makes the rails, uh, of course, uh, they have the uh, challenges to give or accept more uh, customer requirements, technical specifications. So. Uh, it's quite uh, you know interesting just i give an example uh, i was working on a metro project uh, for uh, you know mumbai there uh, in the technical specification when we were going across to you know submit our tender detail or you know tender responses the requirement was the underbody or any any underframe equipment should not fail when the water is water level from the ground should be up to uh, ground can be up to uh, three meters that was a requirement which was never been seen in uh, any other metro projects although it, there are some elevated corridors or under frame cor under uh, you know uh, ground corridors such a requirements are there in that case your bearings or you can say dry units should be self-sufficient or you can say IP protected uh, uh, for this water entries and water ingresses what I mean to say is how the OEMs are changing their requirement or modernizing their requirement. Okay, so next about uh, run longer with the confidence with uh, reduced uh, minimal uh, uh, C TCO that is about uh, cost of ownership and uh, choices to improve environmental impact wherein reduce energy consumption, reduce waste and increase service life. And how these points are really affecting the railway industries. So they really help us for three factors. One is about uh, early failures are being defect, uh, no, detected, focus on the reduced uh, life cycle cost and lastly the new technology and work progress. And these narrow down to a reliable bearings which run longer and longer. And this is possible only with the standardization which is presently what we are following like EN12080 which is a parent one and with the two other uh, standards sub, sub uh, standards 81 as well as 82. Now I go quickly touch upon the railway standards. So when we say about railway standards related standards they can be classified into four. That's the worldwide standards wherein UIC and uh, ISO are the governing bodies. Regional standards as I speak about the EN standards, TSI, AAR where we are dependent, GHOST for Russia. And supplier standards are also been there with the Siemens, Bombardier, Alstom having their own specifications. 
and standards. And lastly, the end user, Deutsche Bahn, China Railway, SNCF, RDSO were for India. So they also have their own level of standards for governing the railway operations. It can be our bearings or, or it can be other systems. So mainly I, I, I skip slides of what is ISO standards or uh, what are the USA standards, but I want to touch upon the EN standard, which is a backbone are presently referred by uh, bearing industries. Mainly it speaks about 12080, which is an overall manufacturing standard and 81, which speaks about the characteristics and test to be respected for the greases and uh, journal bearings. And lastly, 12082, which speaks about the test rigs. Uh, maybe just to you know give an uh, glimpse of testings what uh, railway bearing manufacturer we have maybe around we are around five different manufacturers who supplies for railways now and uh, rarely maybe uh, three uh, uh, bearing manufacturer has a rail test rigs and the sk of being in the or you know in india for 100 years which we celebrated we are going for the test rigs now okay so of course with uh, respecting en standards so uh, this test rigs are very minimal in India and yes in course of time it would be improved improved and we can control the specification when we have the ownership of testing here and again this is about and I speak about the emerging trends which I just uh, touched upon few with some few words when I say about a railway product portfolio at a glance I uh, just shown in a picture in a generalized way about uh, the plane, uh, the bearings, uh, the traction bearings, gearboxes, wheel set uh, bearings, as well as uh, swing bearings and uh, axle boxes. So mainly understanding the right data is a key for us. Understanding the requirements, increase the reliability, extend maintenance intervals, lower maintenance cost and uh, reduced emission. So presently maybe we know go green is, uh, is, is been really been pushed by the government for many of the organization and yes, SKF uh, which I represent really look for this reduced emission and go green concepts are being uh, taken care and just maybe you can google out uh, SKF site we also give a, a, a customer uh, a detailed information when they choose a bearing uh, they will get out the information of how much carbon content is been uh, reduced when you use that application means to make that bearing how much carbon is been uh, uh, contributed so carbon contribution ratings or a carbon contribution values are being, in, uh, being given in our brochures. You, when you, whenever you have time, please go across. So this is about uh, how intensively we look for the go green options. And lastly, uh, about uh, the uh, railway bearing evolutions. So INSA coat bearings as well as uh, the ceramic bearings are one where uh, the emerging uh, technologies are work in progress and some we have already supplied as a SKF to Vande Bharat for the dry bearings who uh, really uh, part of the electrical drives and uh, give a better performance when they go with the <coughs> you know increased uptime and uh, railway equipments for the you know uh, by reducing the electrical uh, shots or you can say the electrical intensity in a reduced way. And lastly, uh, this uh, about uh, the SKF monitoring system, one of the product I want to showcase how uh, the IMAX rail, one of the product of SKF, which uh, detects and mainly uh, you know, checks the temperature as well as uh, bearing uh, vibration monitoring. And it gives how the complete data to customers so that they can uh, foresee uh, um, downtime or you can say the failures. So this is one of the product which we have and uh, I'm happy to you know, uh, declare that SKF is first uh, company which has implemented this conditioning monitoring in Delhi Metro Rail Corporation and it's been validated. And lastly, turning into data into action, how the, this works, a glimpse I want to give about how the data onboarding is been captured with the clouds and how it has been helpful for the fleet availability to check as well as uh, you know green, go green or you can say the carbon footprint are been uh, been assessed 
or uh, lastly maintenance intervals optimization so and uh, bearing performances so that's it from my side so if you have any questions on tbu or railway bearings maybe i can take it out yeah, at the outset i will thank mr gururaj for his uh, very very informative presentation now you can ask questions yeah uh, i am jayanta chakravarty i am from tata steel tata yeah. bearings division yeah. and thank you very much for your uh, very insightful presentations just like to know one thing is obviously you have given um, an advancement in terms of smart bearings but i would like to know the very basics what are the type of bearings that has been actually used in railways i mean is it only taper roller bearings or ball be i mean dgbb or is it a bearing set i just saw a picture of one of them is it the only one or basically the variants of this or there are other types of bearings as well okay so uh, just to touch upon you say about dgbb dgbb were around 50 to 60 year old uh, deep group bearings. ball bearings yeah yes. now we uh, the complete railway bearings are been uh, shifted or you can say the wheel set bearings are been shifted with the tapered uh, bearing units which has a higher capacity of tonnage maybe around uh, 15 to 20 sometimes for the freight up to 30 tons of load axial loads okay can take okay so that's where uh, uh, it's been transformed of course, uh, we have uh, roller bearing units for the drives, which you have seen, uh, mainly the INSA coated or you can say the coated the rollers, which will be helpful for the electrical drives for the grounding. So I have seen actually two variants here in your uh, probably third or fourth slide where you are saying TBU slash CBU. What is CBU? It is CRU. That is a CRU, sorry, okay. Yeah, this is a ro <coughs> cylindrical roller bearing unit. So basically there are two types of bearing units that you are saying, one is the taper roller bearing unit and the cylindrical roller bearing units. Cylindrical are used for the, uh, no, mainly for the electrical drives where the axial load capacities are less Okay. because there is no any uh, purpose of axial loads but the, the TBUs are the axial load taking members. So uh, can you just uh, help me if there are any literatures, you have been saying that there are some standards and there are no Indian standards and it is very important that we include and the standards of Indian Railways in the PIS and probably that is the reason why we are sitting here. Yeah. Um, uh, but is there any, uh, you know, what you have just said, uh, probably based on your experience, is there any literature or standard which actually explains this railway bearings, what type of bearings, actual loads, higher, lower or something like that? Yes, so we, that's what I have shown in uh, my presentation. Okay. There are two uh, base standards which... Oh, 1280 and 1200. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Available in the common platforms. Okay. So we'll give you to next person, sir. Okay. Anybody? Any question? Yeah, I'm Dr. Tiwari from IIT Guwahati. Uh, what is the scope of the spherical roller bearing? Is whether that uh, because here uh, misalignment you are, you are I think yes. trying to stop. Yes. So that is the reason you are not going for spherical. Yes, that is the main reason why the spherical roller mm. bearings are being shifted to tapered roller bearing units where you have uh, two sets of uh, rolling units of, you know, with a common space. Mm. So one more thing regarding the clearance yeah. when you assemble, yeah. so whether they have clearance uh, yes. between the ball and the races uh, in the tapered roller bearing. And races, they uh, exactly what they uh, you are. Means, uh, like ball bearing, we know is having some clearance always. Yeah. But tupper roller bearing, yeah. whether uh, initially when you assemble, yeah. there is a totally tight fit or, or there is a clearance between the rolling element and the races. Yeah. It is. Uh, we can shift the further questions to question and answer sessions, I think. We can, we can go for the next presentation.